Welcome back. I have some more revision, this time paper two. Um, it's past paper. It's from the February, March 2023 um, paper two exam for computer science from the specification. This is part one. I'll go through some of the questions. So we've got paper one, paper two, and they are both weighted at 50%, both worth 75 marks. As you're aware, paper two does cover four of the topics, the hard bit, the algorithm design and problem solving, and programming, and then the easy bit, the databases, and the Boolean logic. So here we go, yes, an hour and 45 minutes um, to get the 75 marks. So let's do question one. I've ticked this, I've, I've done it already, because what it's asking is tick one box to show which word accurately describes the scope of a variable declared in a procedure. Now, depending on who you've had as your teacher, you might not fully appreciate and understand the word procedure. Well, a procedure is, is similar to a function or a subroutine, defining a function, or a subroutine within a program. So in programming, a variable that is declared inside a procedure, otherwise known as a function or a subroutine, is only accessible within that function or subroutine. It is a variable with a local scope, meaning that it can only be accessed and used within the specific block of code where it is defined. Now, on the other hand, a global variable is a variable that is declared outside of any procedure, function, or subroutine, and can be accessed and modified from any part of the program. So therefore, since the scope of the variable declared in a procedure is limited to that procedure and cannot be accessed from any part of the program, the correct word to describe its scope is local. Okay, and that's a one mark. Okay, for question two, four descriptions and five pseudocode statements are shown Draw one line to link each description to its most appropriate pseudocode statement. Not all pseudocode statements will be used. Okay, well, the first one wasn't used, and I'll tell you why. So, a statement to count. Well, here we've got value as being assigned a value plus one. So, every time, it's obviously going to be sat in some kind of a loop, and value plus one, and it will just count up in ones. One, two, three, until a while um, something has changed. A statement total. Well, again here I've I've got a um, I've, I've got a variable called value, and this has been assigned value plus new value. And again, if that was looped around, okay, every time a new value appeared, it would go into the variable value. Okay, so that's going to be totaling um, every time a new value comes in. A statement to start a precondition loop. Well, I'm going to use this while value. So while the value is greater than ten, do. Okay, so it's telling us to do something while the value is greater than 10. So this is called preconditioned statement. A postcondition statement would be basically repeat once something has been done. So after the event, repeat. Okay, and this and the one that's missing for count has been assigned um, 1 to 10. So it's going to count from 1 to 10. Um, none of these um, refer to anything like that. Write an algorithm in pseudocode using a single loop to output the average of 50 numbers that have been stored in an array number. First of all, I'm going to, I'm going to create I'm going to I'm going to create a variable called total and I'm going to assign it the value zero. Okay. Then I'm going to create a for loop that's going to count around. It's going to go around and around 50 times. Count from one to 50, and then this total up here total is going to be assigned total plus the number in the count okay so 50 numbers that have been stored in the array so it's going to it's going to count each of those 50 numbers out of the array number so first number it's basically indexing we're using count as indexing so the first number all the way up to the 50th number yeah it repeats next count so it counts first number second number third number fourth number all the way up to the 50th number and then once it's got this total once we've counted all the numbers which have been stored in the number array yeah, and the stored in total, then we're going to divide that by the number of numbers stored in the array, basically 50 numbers. So we're going to divide it by 50. And then we're going to output the average is, a little message, the average is, yeah, um, the total, all the numbers stored in the array number, divided by 50, and that is what the average is. So that would get us the five marks. We've got to use initialization, appropriate loop controls, totaling statement inside the loop, Okay, 
outside the loop and calculation of average outside the loop and output an average inside the loop. Okay, here we need to know what test data is. Describe the purpose of test data, include an example of a type of test data in your answer. Well, we've all used it, and we've all um, used test data when we've been doing trace tables. So in programming, test data refers to the sample data that is used to test the functionality and validity of a program or a specific part of a program. The main purpose of test data is to verify that the program behaves as expected and produces the correct output for different inputs including extreme data, normal data, erroneous data, and boundary conditional data. And my example here, um, erroneous data, basically data that the program cannot process and should not accept. If um, a user has been asked to enter a, uh, um, numbers, a set of numbers, and somebody types in numbers actually in words, somebody types in the number 10 as T-E-N, then obviously that should not be accepted and would not work, okay? Probably gone a little bit overboard there, but that would give us three marks. Number four, I'm going to describe how variables and constants are used in programming. Well, I'm going to take the two. Um, a variable or variables are used to store values that can be changed or updated during the program's execution. A variable is defined by assigning it a name and a data type, such as an integer, a floating point, string, a boolean. Once a variable is defined, it can be assigned a value, and that value can be, can be changed or updated as the program runs. On the other hand, constants um, are used to store values that do not change during the program's execution. A constant is defined by assigning it a name and a value, such as it looks like a variable, um, which cannot be changed while the program is running. Constants are often used to store fixed values such as mathematical constants, e.g. pi, or the number of days in a week, or the 12 months of the year, um, things that don't, don't change. Okay, so we've got a drop down, um, a drop down design sort of subsystem. Um, here we go, and this is for a food ordering system. So I'll fill this in. Okay, the food ordering system allows the user to enter the details of the food they want to order and to pay for the order. It also displays foods available as pictures or as a list. So complete the structure diagram for the given parts of the food ordering system. So obviously, a food ordering system broken down into two parts: um, the inputs and the outputs okay so the user input and the display options so the user chooses a display do they want pictures or lists and there we go the display option would be pictures or lists but it also allows them to enter the food they want to order and it also allows them to pay for their order okay that might be the one that throws you choosing the display but that would be it that would give you full marks okay right we have a um we have some code which is which has got three problems in it okay the energy efficiency of an electrical appliance is the percentage of useful energy out compared with the total energy in an algorithm has been written to, in pseudocode to calculate the energy efficiency of an appliance values for total energy in and useful energy out are input the efficiency is calculated and output as a percentage the entry of the number minus one for either value stops the algorithm running so we're going to repeat until um, total energy in is equal to um, minus is well no I don't know what that means surely that should be equal to so repeat until total energy equals minus one or useful energy equals minus useful energy out equals minus one so these are basically does not equal minus one does not equal minus one but then let's carry on with this. Oh, so that's obviously wrong at the bottom. Repeat, output energy, total energy in. Okay, so a message appears. Input the total energy in, okay. Output energy, useful energy out. Output useful energy, well, no, that's obviously an input there, so that must be wrong, line five. If total energy in does not equal minus one and useful energy does not equal minus one, then useful energy has been assigned the value, useful energy out, useful energy in times 100 output efficiency in efficiency percentage okay well i've done this so let's have a little look yeah it's a naming convention there that's where i put where it got wrong so yeah yeah it's the first thing that's gone wrong yeah line five output useful energy out it should be an input output input output input it should be then line six there's a naming convention 
Okay, it should be useful energy out. And we've just got useful energy. We've missed out the, we've got total energy in and useful energy should be out. Okay, so they're the three lines of code that are wrong. Okay, and the corrections. So I think that's six marks, that one. We're just doing that. And then, okay, it's asking for right pseudocode to check for an efficiency of 92% or over for an appliance, for this appliance, and to output A rated if the efficiency is 92% or over. Well, at some point then, I'm going to put, yeah, if total energy, da, 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 then efficiency times 100. If we do another one here after this, so after this if statement, so new new line 11, if your efficiency is greater than or equal to 92, then output A rated of end if. Okay, I would stick in after line 10. Okay. Here we've got another logic circuit, and a very, very easy one. X equals A or not B and B and not C. Okay, so I've highlighted the or, the not, the and, the and, and the not. Um, and there we go. We've got a um, or gate, two and gates, and two not gates. So we're just going to stick them into this. Okay, so first of all, we've got an and here, so the and must go there. Okay, and then if I take A and not B, so A is going into A or, to the or gate, A or not B, so not B going there, and then B coming down here, and not C, okay, going into that AND gate. Yep. Um, I'm going to take this circuit, I'm going to stick another couple of working areas in here, D and E, so I can sort of break it apart. So let's do that. So whenever both of these are off, um, obviously that flips it round, so D would be on. Yeah, and going through there, E is the same. We're flipping that one around, but it's an AND gate, so most of the time an AND gate has got to have both on for B and D, so those two there. Yeah, A and B, like so. So we're going to take D and E, and they've both got to be on. So looking at this, the only one that would work, D and E, would be this one. I think the rest would be off. Yeah, there we go. Okay, that's it for this video. I will cover how I fill in this trace table in the next video and how I work through this. But until then, thank you very much indeed for watching and I will see you next time. Please continue to ask questions, leave your comments, hit notifications and please subscribe. And finally, if you wish to buy me a coffee, I would be truly grateful. Please visit buymeacoffee.com forward slash learning zone. Thank you very much indeed. See you next time. Bye for now.